Hey, hey, this is your girl, Troy Ravenel, speaker, author, coach, also the founder and visionary behind the Wives Who Win movement and also on the Married, Married Couples Who Win Training Center, which you can find on Facebook. Listen, this video right here, we're talking about love. We're talking about what love looks like in a marriage, uh, what, how we should demonstrate love toward our spouses. It's not what you think. It's not about a bunch of emotions and a bunch of feelings. It's not just about um, helping each other around the house or filling up her car guys and washing her car or gals cooking and cleaning that's not just what it's about it's in, it includes that it can as far as the actions is concerned but we want to get into the word of god and see how, what the word of god is saying to us about how we should love one another for real for real so if that's been your struggle or if your love has been up or down sideways full with a lot of emotion and or, or unfortunately with some hurt or pain or just some ambiguity and you need to know how to love your spouse as Christ loved the church, men and, and women, how to love your spouse as according to the word of God and respect him, then you really want to look at this video. You want to take notes and you want to subscribe. See you on the other side. This is your girl, Terrell Ravenel, founder and visionary behind the Wives Who Win movement and also the Married Couples Who Win Training Center, as well as the co-founder of Detour Movement Incorporated and the Elevate Circle of Kingdom Builders, which you can all find on Facebook. <laughs> I'm excited this week because we are talking about love. Mm. What does it mean to love? What does that look like? Um, how does that feel? I know we've all been taught, uh, you know, what love is a feeling and and, and, and love is a decision, which it is. And we've been taught a lot of things when it comes to love. But what I'm finding out is that it's not being demonstrated as it should be according to the word of God. I even had to go and look at my own marriage to see what love looked like and to see if I was demonstrating those principles according to the word of God. You know, many of us throw around, around the word love, but do we really know what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like? And are we demonstrating those things in our marriage every single day? So we want to have that conversation on today. But before I do that, let me pull up my notes here on my other device. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Every week we are, um, every week I am uh, posting a new video, video here. So we talked about forgiveness. We've talked about unity. We've talked about a whole bunch of other stuff. And this week and the weeks to come, we'll be just landing here for a while and talking about love. You know, as believers of Jesus Christ, as followers of Christ, if we just simply obey the word of God, if we simply obey the word of God and do what the word has called us to do, zero the, the um, divorce rate would be 0%. Families would be happy, united. You know, there will, will be no blended families and all these other things that are going on. And I'm not saying anything against a blended family because I have one. But what I'm saying is that if we follow the instructions of the word of God, things, life will be so much simpler. Our lives will be simpler. Our marriages will be simpler. Our family life, everything would just be simpler. But because we refuse to obey the word, we refuse to um, go by the guidelines that's laid out, clearly defined in the word of God, we make our lives harder. We make our decisions harder right so today i want to talk to you and i'm coming from first corinthians 13 which many of you i'm sure is familiar with this verse and in this verse uh in this verse of scripture i'm going to read it in two different versions the first version i'm going to read is a new living translation and the second version i'm going to read is in the message version because i want you to really see what love looks like and also while i'm talking i want you to evaluate your life not your husband's not your wife but to evaluate your life. And I promise you that I am doing to the same for my life. I'm looking at my life and I'm, I'm going to go step by step and verse by verse to see if this is showing up in my life. Because you can't give somebody something you ain't got. You cannot give somebody something that you yourself do not possess. So we're going to be getting down and dirty in it. Some things we're going to be talking about here 
um, over the next the next couple of weeks is loving God, loving yourself, loving others, uh, demonstrations of love. You know, has the love been lost in your marriage? How to revive and restore the love. So we're going to talk about a lot of things as it relates to love. And we're all going to be coming from this verse of scripture. And I have some others that we're going to be reading as well because it has to coincide. Uh, you know, the word of God piggybacks off of each verse, you know. So we can't look at one verse of scripture and not look at another verse of scripture. So I'm going to read it here in the New Living Translation. And then uh, we're going to go over to the... The, uh, the message okay so it starts off saying what is love if I could speak in any language in heaven or on earth but didn't love others I would only be a be making meaningless noise like a loud kong or a clanging cymbal if I had the gift of prophecy and if I knew all the mysteries of the future and do everything about everything <laughs> but I didn't have love and I didn't know how to love others what good would that be if I had the gifts of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and tell it to move without love, I would be no good to anybody. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my own body, I could boast about it, but it, but if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. Love is patient. Love is kind. <laughs> love is jealous. No, love is not jealous, I'm sorry. Or boastful, or proud, or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. And it keeps no record of wrong when, when injustice. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whatever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. That's part A of verse 8. And now I want to read the message version because as I was reading this, I was like, wow, God. And I was just so blown away that he loved us so much and he cares about us so much that he allowed Paul to give us the definition of love so we wouldn't have to figure it out. See, what's happening is that we're trying to figure out how to love our husbands and how to love our wives on our own. In our own way, on our own terms, with our own instructions, with our own definitions. When God has clearly laid it out in the word of God, what that is supposed to look like. We are allowing our flesh, and I'm saying we because I'm including myself in this, as I always do. We allow ourselves, or I try to always do anyway. We allow ourselves to um, come up with our own theory of, of how we are going to love our spouses and if things are not working uh, in the way that we want them to work or going the way that we want them to go our love for them lessens whereas our love for them should be increasing so if you're on this video right now and you're struggling with this love thing and you say you love your husband you say you love your wife but your actions are not reflecting that, stay on this video. Because I believe that there's going to be a release here. I believe that God is going to restore that love in you. He's going to restore that love in your marriage. And that you all will really truly understand what God God's love looked like when we are extending love to others. Now I want to read um, the message version. And this is what it says. It says the way of love. So the new living says, what is love? And this is the way of love. It says, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, that means great, very well spoken, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. And we all know what that sounds like. Open it, you know, need some WD-44 because <laughs> it's so rusty and creaking. It's just a lot of noise. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all of his mysteries and making everything plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. That means you can be a prophet. That means that you can be a pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, a bishop, deacon, deaconess, serving on five different ministries in the church, going on mission trips, doing things in the community, but if you don't have love, 
That's meaningless, as the book of Ecclesiastes would say. It's meaningless. Okay, verses 3 through 7, it says, If I give everything I own to the poor, and even go to the stake to be born, burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. It say it doesn't matter what we say, what we do, you know, we go out here and many of us have been called to do mission work and, you know, go out in the communities or go to various countries and serve those people in those countries. And we do those things. We do those things online. We do those things in person. But if we're doing those things and we're not demonstrating love toward our spouses, our children, all these other people that are, that, that we, we, are connected to on a day-to-day -day basis yeah in service that can be love but in service also can be just your you have a desire to serve your ambitions you want to see the world a better place that doesn't necessarily mean you love them or you love what you're doing you can just have that ambition and drive and desire to want to do something like that right so we want to make sure that we're doing it if we're doing it we're not complaining we're not murmuring we're not fault finding we're not looking at other people, seeing what they're not doing, but we're truly doing it with the heart of God. And that's the same thing in our marriage. We want to make sure that we're loving our spouses with the heart of God, not with our own heart. Because see, the thing is, our heart, and I'm going to talk about this in the next video, our heart is messed up, right? Yeah, we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We have the atoning blood, the sacrificial blood, and the Lamb of God. Yes, we have all of that, but our heart... <laughs> Our heart is a messy mess. So much gunk, so much things that we've been carrying around. Many of us have released it and continue to release those things, but things we've been carrying around from our childhood, things we've been carrying around from past relationships. And I don't want to get into it too much because I want to talk about that on another video. But our heart, we want to make sure that we're not depending on our normal heart, our natural heart to love our spouses, right? So we're going to go on and says, love never gives up. Love never cares more for others. Love cares more for others, I'm sorry, than for self. That means that love is selfless. And let's back up here. It says love never gives up. Have you been thinking about giving up on your marriage? Have you been thinking about walking out? Have you been thinking about this is not what I signed up for? Have you been thinking about he's never going to change? She's never going to change. I don't know how much more I can stay here. I don't know how much more I can take. Have you been thinking about that? Have you been thinking about giving up? Marriage is not about giving up. And part of Wives Who Win is you making a non-negotiable decision that you will never ever give up on your marriage, that you will fight for your marriage in the same way that you fight for everything else, the same way you fought for that job, the same way you fight for your children, the same way you fight for other areas that you're passionate about, that you will do the same thing for your marriage. Love cares more for others than self. Now that's not saying that you always make that person the number one priority because there are times when you have to make yourself a priority. But what it's saying is that you are willing to put that other person needs before yourself. How many of us are willing to do that? I know a few times, more than a few, I was not willing to do that because I was thinking about what does trail want? How does trail feel? What is trail thinking? And you know what? Sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes it's about the other person. Marriage is the greatest demonstration of Christ's love toward his church. He created marriage so that we can see how we are to treat one another. He said that I am, he is the groom. We are the bride of Christ. And he loves us limitlessly and abounding in love is his love that he shows toward us. He loves us so much that he gave his life for us. The same way we are to give our life, not so much in a, in a literal, in me, be in a literal, right? But a figuratively speaking way. Are we willing to give our lives, give, give ourselves, give up our old ways, give up our old habits, give up our, our you know, our, that bondage and that baggage, give up all of the things that we did before in order to have a successful and a healthy marriage? 
Love does what doesn't want what it doesn't have. It's not constantly trying to get what everybody else has. Are you looking at your husband and and you're uh, wanting him to be something and do things that he isn't? And he don't know how? Or even your wife? Are you demanding something and you know it's impossible? Are you making that claim to him or her? Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swell big head. It does, it's not a I told you so type of personality. That's not love. That's pride. That's arrogance. How are you operating in love? It doesn't force itself on others. It's always, it is, isn't always me first. It doesn't fly off the handle. It doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It doesn't revel when others growl. It takes pleasure in flowering the truth. It wants the truth to come out. It wants the truth to win. It picks up with anything. It trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. It never dies. So listen, this is only the breaking ground and the foundation of us talking about love and what it looks like. It's not about word, but it's about word and deed. It's about what you say and combine what you do. Those things have to work simultaneously. So if I'm saying I love you, then my actions have to demonstrate that. And we're going to talk more about that in the second video. So listen, if you like this video, please share this, subscribe to my channel so that every week you'll be getting the goods on the messages that are coming across. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that the previous messages have blessed you. Let me know if you're enjoying these series and these messages. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to talk about or expand on. Expound on. You can do that by emailing me at info at wiveswhowin.com. Make sure that you are connected to our community. Wives Who Win is our business page on Facebook, our personal business page, our public figure business page, however Facebook has now classified that as. And the Married Couples Who Win is also a page for married couples and those that are in the courtship stage or dating stage um, and desiring to get married. So until next time, I love you all with the love of Jesus. I really do. And I'll see you soon.